In today's show, we talk about Power Apps check-in and check-out. So I built a little app for some inventory management as we kind of take things on and off the shelf and to track who has them. And so I thought I'd walk you guys through all the fun little concepts we learned in the app. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're doing Power Apps check-in and check-out. So this is an app that I built because I'm always getting these questions like, how do I like manage things? Right? We want to sign out a loan or computer, or we want to sign out a desk, or we want to sign out you know, different things and kind of manage that inventory process. So I threw this app together and I did it you know, in a different kind of way in a little bit. But the idea here is I'm going to show off some stuff. So we're going to talk about some pin input, right? So them signing it and then storing that as base 64. Ooh. We're going to have a history log list plus the inventory list. We're going to update both of those at the same time. We're going to pull in with, we're going to do a couple of visual tricks, and then we're going to cover update if and remove if just because they were little, little tidbits. All right. So this app isn't all about building this one. And we're going to go through a whole app, but there's just a bunch of little concepts in here that I've wanted to expose. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, that's enough blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Over here on the desktop, I thought I'd just kind of start with a you know simple view of what we did. Let's just kind of reset back here. So these are the different inventory items that I'm rocking. So you can see up here, like the Chewy toy, we have zero of four available. So the little checkout, the little like process it is, is hidden, right? So we'll talk about that. Um, Ghost, there's one of four available. Pac-Man toys, there's two. And if we click on the Pac-Man toy, We'll see we can choose one or two. Now what's fun here though, is if you click on the ghost toy, because there's only one to borrow, we're limiting the number that we show to borrow, right? You can't borrow more than we have. So we're gonna control that in our settings. Um, also you'll notice here that borrow is currently grayed out until I sign things. Ooh, so we're gonna talk about that. I covered that like three years ago in a video and the way that we did it there doesn't work anymore. So I had to refigure re it out. So we're gonna expose that finally. And if we borrow this item, boom, we're signed out, right? The inventory has been reduced. And if we go over here, we're like, all right, awesome. We can see the different things that we've got. We can also be like, hey, but what did I borrow in the past? And so here you can see that I borrowed some ghost toys in the past as well, but I've already returned it. So you can't return something you've already returned. Well, kind of fun. And then last but not least, because I thought this was awesome, as I wanted a way, as I was playing with this half, I've been playing with it for about two weeks now, I want to be able to reset everything back to zero. So this little button down here, not something you'd probably leave in the app, but it sets all the inventory back to zero and it got rid of everything that we'd borrowed. So it kind of sets my app back. And I think it's just a fun concept because sometimes you guys want to see that, right? You want to be able to play easier, right? I play all the time and my little, little gizmos like that make my life easier. So how did I build this thing? Well, let's start over here on this screen. And so initially here, the shared equipment, this is a SharePoint list here. Let me open that up real quick in the browser. So there we go. So this is just a SharePoint list where I put some of the data. So we've got number of units, right? This is the number of items that we own that we could potentially loan and the number that we had on loan and the last time something was loaned out. And then of course here, we've got the item image and uh, these are in here, you know, they're uh, links to other SharePoint files and then the item description. So if we go to list settings, cause this is what you guys will ask me for and I'll just show you now, save myself the effort. <laughs> so there's the settings around the different column types. And just remember that item image is a hyperlink column, but I've set the picture, format URLs picture, and that's the reason it shows up as a picture. So, so there's the columns around that data set. Um, we also then have the equipment list logs. So this is where we're gonna log the person borrowing things and keep track of the status of the actual borrowing of items. So we have a lot of uh, columns going on here. And if we just go here to list settings real quick. So if you guys wanted to steal the idea and speaking of steal, if you just want this whole working app, remember you can go to training.powerapps911.com, sign up for the curated library and for like a whopping $10 a month's current price, you can download this and all my other apps and all the videos, like everything is out there. Uh, so pretty cool little way to get your access. All right. Anyway, so now we've got the two of these uh, kind of fine. So over here, that's all we're doing right here. Now, you know, the most of these columns are kind of what you would consider the default behavior. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, you know, this one's just item image title. This one here, though, I had to do a little work. 
And so the reason for this is I decided not to do a calculated column to kind of keep track of the numbers. I could have, but I was like, you know what, let's, let's make this a little more manual. I never know what your data source is going to be. This, I don't want this to be a SharePoint specific video. This is a, any data source video. But so what I'm saying is, hey, take this item number of units and subtract this item's number of, on loan. So that's how I'm on the fly calculating the number available and then of number of units is a static number. Simple enough. And then remember earlier, like when we were out of uh, toys, we couldn't see. So here we're just saying, oh, let's not show that part first. Let's show this. The visible property is just if the number of units minus the number on loan is greater than zero. So if this is true, show the, the little button to let them borrow it. If it's not true, then this is invisible and they can't borrow anymore. All right, so then speaking of this button, what you probably are more interested in is on select here. So we're doing two things. One is we're setting var record two. I was having variable name problems. So var record two is the um, going to be this record. Remember, I don't like to use selected. That was last week's video. If you didn't see that one, check it out. I'll point it, put a link up there. But I always like to just put the record in a variable. And it's going to be very handy what we're going to do here in a minute. So, And then I, so when you click this, we put the variable or we put the selected record into a variable. We then show the form. So var sign out form is true over here. And it's actually not a form, but I call it a form. So we're going to set that variable to true. And then this is part of making the pin Im Im input work, right? So set var pin to pin input one dot image. So what that's going to do is that's going to show the pin input. It'll be blank and it's going to capture the what's in there. It's going to capture that it's blank. Because in a second, we're going to see that my borrow button only becomes visible if what's in the pin input is different than what they have, um, than the blank image. So that tells me that they scribbled at least a dot in there. So not perfect signature validation, but at least forces them to provide some form of a touch in there. So they can't say, oh, I didn't even see it. Oh, you did, because you had to click in there once. Okay, so let's click on this. <coughs> and so then now you can see that a bunch of stuff showed up. Um, so the stuff that showed up over here, these are all individual controls. Like if we scroll over here, they're all, I didn't use a form. I don't like forms. We've talked about that before. So they're all individual controls. And then if you just look, all of their visible properties are tied to way down here, var sign out, show sign out form. So if that variable is true, they show up. If they're not, they're false. So that was how I did that. Um, for the default, for this date here, I want the default date. I want the default borrowing period to be seven days. So just remember that you can go here and say default date is today plus seven. And so that's why even though it is the 24th, it is showing my plan return date seven days from today on Saturday the 1st. Quantity to borrow. So this was another fun little trick. Remember that your, um, you know, in the drop down, right, I might have four of these. So right now you could borrow four of these, right? If we hit the alt key, we can do four. But this, if we do Pac-Man toy down here, we can only do two. So the way that that's working is I'm using the sequence function and saying, hey, just show me the sequence of the available units, right? Which is the number of units minus the number on loan. So that was how I was able to, um, you know, calculate that for myself and have that available. But then we only want to see the right amount. Not too bad. This is just a normal label with a bunch of dynamic pieces in here. Nothing new there. The signature doesn't have anything, uh, but remember we said that down here, the borrow button, what we did was we're like, hey, dis display mode, if var pin is equal to var or pin input one image, then make it disabled, if not be edit. So this, remember var pin was when we clicked on the little um, you know, arrow right here, and we clicked on this arrow in the gallery, we set that variable and it was blank. And so if it still looks blank, then they don't, then they match, then it should be disabled. But as soon as I scribble in here, my little smiley face, and I had some great art and it got deleted earlier. It was very sad. My art is not good this morning. There you go. There's the borrow. Finally, down here, if you click on borrow, on select, all we're going to do, oh, we're going to do lots. So I went ahead and documented this to make it easier for you. You can always just pause it and look at it or download the app like we talked about. But so set var spinner to true. That's my little loading spinner that uh, you know stops people from doing anything while they wait on the processing. We're going to patch shared equipment. That is this list. We're going to set var record two. That's a record we want to edit, which is a record they selected over here. And number on loan is 
FAR Record 2's number on loan. So the number on loan that it had when we clicked on it, plus however many they borrowed. Um, so I got this one backwards in my first row, round. I kept wanting to subtract that, but number on loan is the current number on loan minus the two from the dropdown you just selected that you want to take. So I screwed that up the first time, but it's better now. Um, then this is something we, we did in some videos along the way, but remember, this is this concept of converting a base 64. So if you want to take my chicken scratch, and you know, my little fancy marker here, no, if you want to take their chicken scratch and turn it into an image, there's a bunch of different things you could do with it. You could save the image to like a file in a document library. We've covered that before. But what I wanted to do here is I wanted to do something different that uh, Daniel LeMay and I do sometimes, but we had never shown in a video. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the actual base 64 encoding of the file, and we're going to take that base 64 and we're going to put that into a multi uh, string or multi line of text field in SharePoint, right? If we go back over here, and so if you looked, Down here under columns, what you're going to see is that signature is a multi-line of text. So it's not an image column. It's not anything else. It is literally multi-lines of text. We're going to store the big old base 64, all those ones and twos and zeros and A's and B's and Z's. Or Z's? Yeah, Z's. A, <laughs> I, get, I, I didn't feel like it said Z. Whatever. You don't care. So anyway, we're going to store all that, and I'm going to show you how to use that again. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it, but in some of our requirements, it's worked out well for us. So this is a chance for me to show you how that works. So these two lines are just about getting the base 64 of that image and then cleaning off the header portion, right? The little front tag, because I wanted that cleaned out. I wanted just, uh, basically just the pin input. All right, so now we've got that, we're going to patch the equipment list log. So that's the log where we're tracking the history. We're going to do uh, defaults, we're gonna create a new record, and we're going to just write some fields, right? Title, user, full name, user email. I was very annoyed with myself. I meant to remove this. Remember, I typically just put create a variable on app on start set var user, and I make that, uh, and then I use that instead of calling the user function over and over again. It doesn't matter, but I I, I don't love what I did there. So, uh, quantity borrowed is the drop down selected value. Date borrowed is today. Yeah. Date plan to return. That's the selected date from that date picker. Cool. The status is hard coded borrowing. Item borrowed is var record two's ID. So whatever item over here, so in this case, the little Pac-Man toy, we're grabbing its ID, because we need to relate the data back later, so we're grabbing that ID. Now, here's one of those things I'm doing that if you're a database purist, it's gonna make your skin crawl. But I'm also grabbing the item borrowed title right now. So you borrowed the Pac-Man toy, I'm grabbing the ID of the Pac-Man toy, which I think is two, and then I'm grabbing the title, which is Pac-Man toy. Why? Why is because I don't want to have to fetch that later. I don't want my gallery on the other screen to have lookups and a bunch of chaos. And so while this is not good from a normalized data perspective, right, which is a garbage I learned in college way too much about when I hated, um, but that if I normalize the data, then I've got to make a bunch of extra lookup calls over in Power Apps to go get that data back. In reality, when I borrow the Pac-Man toy, I don't want if it, I don't want the like title. If you go change the title of Pac-Man toy to the really cool Pac-Man toy, I don't care, right? I want to just you you checked out the Pac-Man toy. When you go look at the history, you should be able to match one for one in your brain. I borrowed Pac-Man toy. Oh look, it says Pac-Man toy. So I was good with keeping the title as static data. This was a design choice I made. Database administrators mad, Power Apps builders happy. Sounds like a good world to me. And then finally, the signature, we're putting all that base 64 we just talked about into the signature file. And we're going to go show that on the other screen in a second. Okay, so now we've patched both our data sources. Yay. We need to reset everything. And so we're going to select icon cancel. So this is the equivalent of clicking this little button up here. And this button up here sets the variable to sign out form to false, sets the record back to blank, resets the pin input back to blank, and resets the date picker back to its default. So it kind of gets everything back in happy hunky-dory order. Now, if you're thinking, Shane, how did you make a circle with a little X inside of it? I didn't. They're actually two different controls. I just threw the circle in the back right here, made it gray, and I just threw the X, which I wanted them to click, on top of it. Little design element trick. It 
didn't look as pretty as I wanted, but it, it can look pretty if you put a little more effort than I did into it. But you get the idea that sometimes we can kind of stack to make those visuals. All right, back to borrow. And then last but not least, we turn off the spinner. So, so let's click on it, see what happens. So it looks like we're gonna borrow one Pac-Man toy. Eh, let's borrow two. Yeah, we'll borrow one, whatever. So we'll say borrow, there's my spinner, everything happened, Pac-Man toy has been updated. And notice now if we go back into Pac-Man toy, the drop down only has one. Yeah, we'll cancel out of there. Okay, so we borrowed one of those. Um, let's borrow some ghost toys real quick. We'll borrow three of these. We'll draw a ghost spooky. Yeah, I think if this came flying at me, I would not be scared, I would laugh, but whatever. So borrow that. Okay, so we borrowed some stuff. Uh, we would borrow Chewy, but he is napping right there right now, so we'll leave him be. Okay, so there you go. You can see the items that I have currently borrowed. And if we look at this now, what do we got? So the first thing here is that my gallery, uh, so this is, let's collapse this, is this gallery. So the gallery up here, I wrote an if. And so I said, hey, if this little toggle that says show previously turned items is true, then filter the list to only show me the things where the borrow email, probably should have said borrow or email, equals the user's email. Yeah. So I only see the things I borrowed. And if not, if I go up there and deselect that, then we're going to filter borrow email equals my email and the status equals borrowing. So that's why right, right now, if we look, we see everything because we don't have any return things. So let's return the Pac-Man toy real quick. Return the Pac-Man toy. Are you sure you want to return the Pac-Man toy? Yep. Remember, I'm holding down the Alt key right now so I could click on this if you didn't know. So we say, yep. So now Pac-Man has been returned. I can't return it anymore. And if we go here to the, the default state, which is show previous returned items and no, then we only see the ghost in that beautiful drawing. Got it? So how does this all work? Great question. Well, first off, let's just talk about showing the data. These are all just normal fields, right? Nothing fancy here. Um, I did do a little thing here where I said, hey, status, borrowing, so show me the status and the word, so in this case, borrowing, and if the status equals returned, then also append to that on the actual return date, right? So that way, if I click on this, you'll see that status returned on 424, but right here, it doesn't say status borrowing on nothing. So I just did that with a cute little if. Yeah, nothing great, but you know, little, little things, make your app nicer. All right, um, so then the signature. It's actually that simple. So that is an image control and it is just showing this item dot signature. Because if we go back over here and we go to the equipment list log, you're going to see that the signature field is literally the base 64, data colon image slash PNG colon base 64, blah, blah, blah. That's it, right? It is, we stored the raw base 64 as text and we're then able just to show it back as an image. This is. Like I said, Daniel and I have to do this for certain scenarios, so I want you guys to see how this worked. Now, pro tip, if you have too many of these base 64 images, your SharePoint will get very, very, very slow to the point where it probably won't open. So what you wanna make sure you do, come back over here, say list settings, and then go down here to views, and then deselect signature. You have got to do this, right? I cannot tell you how many times I've forgotten to do that. I, I almost got in trouble here. And I end up with 10 or 20 or 50 signatures, and all of a sudden this page either doesn't open or this page takes like 30 minutes to open. So you don't want to fall in that. The data is still there, it's just not in the view, so it doesn't have to load to load this page. But if I click on this record, I can then still see there is the signature. Ooh, I'm glad I remembered that tip. I'd been, you guys would have yelled at me for that if I hadn't shown you that one. Okay, almost done. I know it's getting a little long, but there's so much in here. This app is fun. So over here then last but not least on the return item, this is gonna do two things. This is gonna create a variable called var record three. I told you I had variable problems, don't judge. But so it's gonna create a variable called uh, var record three, which is the record they just clicked on and then show confirm is true. So let's press it. Show confirm true obviously shows this group of the pop-up, the modal data. So in here, are you sure you've returned var record three item, item borrow title? Pretty straightforward. If you click on the, oh, 
Power Apps. If you click on this X right here, it just uh, sets the variable back to false, nothing too elaborate. But the Yep button, this one also does a bunch. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a width function, right? I love the width function. It's just a great way to avoid repetitive lookups because what I need to do is I need to go fetch the record. Remember, this is that related record. I need to go fetch Pac-Man's record because we're going to have to update it in a second. So I needed it. So I fetch it with this lookup and write it in a SharePoint item patch. So I can say patch shared equipment, Pac-Man's record. Number on loan is Pac-Man's record number on loan minus the amount that they're returning right now. So that's how we put things back into inventory. And this is would have been a little more tricky if I had not went and fetched this. I'd had to call it a couple times and I didn't want to have repetitive calls. So that's why there's a width here, right? Go fetch the record you want to update and then use some of its values to know what their current status is because you want to increment those when you up return. On the equipment list log then, I'm just updating the actual record they clicked in here and we're changing the status from borrowing to returned, and then the date of the actual return is today, right? They're returning it today. You could start, keep now if you wanted, it doesn't matter. And then finally, set var show confirm to false. So there you go, that would return the items. So now we have nothing on loan, but we could definitely go see the old things that we had borrowed. All right, Whew. that's a lot of stuff. But there's one more thing, one more trick I got up my sleeve for you, right? But hopefully you can see why, A, we're not building that whole video from scratch. It took me 20 minutes just to explain to you how it worked with it already pre-built. Um, but also it's this whole idea around, you know, there's just, there was a lot. I spent two weeks kind of tinkering here. I changed this, changed that, which is kind of fun. So last but not least, I told you I've got this admin reset button. So this one gave me a chance to show you guys two very scary but very fun little functions. So remove if, I think I've told you guys this story before, but remove if we'll say go to the data source, equipment list log, and in this case, typically you're gonna put a condition here, like if the status equals expired, or if, you know, the something, right? You'd have some type of condition to find the records you want to remove. If you just put true, then that means every rec record matches, which means it will delete every record. If you screw this up, which I have done before, twice. It will delete all the data or the data you don't want. On two different occasions, I have deleted thousands of records of a customer's information because I got a little quick happy with remove if. So you've got to be careful with remove if. This case is a test list. It's no big deal. Now, the other upside is, is when I use this, it is also going to put it in the recycle bin in SharePoint. Woo. So that saved my bacon one of the two times. The other time did not. Um, but so it is there and available to you. But so this is how I do it. I'm like, Hey, the equipment list, blank it all out, Re delete everything. And then on the shared equipment list, right? These are the four items you see here. We're just going to update if all of those. So update all of them, same type of thing. You normally put some type of condition here, update if the user is this, or if the ID is that, or if the date returned was this, whatever, right? Usually you have some type of filter criteria there, like a true condition. If you know, something equals something. If that evaluates to true, then you would do it. But I wanted to update all of them, so I cheated and put a true there. And I just said set everybody's number on loan back to zero. So if we do that, I right, let's just borrow some stuff real quick. Whoop, borrow that. We'll borrow Chewy, even if he is napping. All right, so we got data over here. We got data here. So if we press this button, I didn't put a spinner. I probably should have done that. But you can see that all my inventory went back to zero. Yay. And there is nothing here. And if we were to look over in the deer recycle bin, you would see that there is lots of stuff for equipment list log and um, I, so all, my, all my remove if stuff landed in the recycle bin. All my update if stuff didn't go in the recycle bin. They just got updated. So you'd have to have versions or something like that to get those back. So there you go, guys and girls. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, remember, if you want just to download this whole working app, because there's a lot of fun stuff here, training.powerapps911.com and curated library. Right, the one with my picture on it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. And goodness sakes, hit the subscribe button. 
all right, we're doing great. We're coming up on 100,000. And, you know, I need to make sure that you're all hitting that. I just pound that button. I, I hate when people say that stuff. Pound the like button. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, unless you want to. <laughs> anyway, I think that's everything I've got for today. You know, hopefully you enjoyed this. You know, let me know, like, how do you feel about these videos where I take a working app and I just show you all the pieces versus building it? I know that's a little bit different. A lot of times I start with a blank screen and build it out, but there was just so much in this one, I didn't think we could do that. Cool? All right. And with that, I think I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.